Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, uh, dear sister Joan. Uh, we praise God for this wonderful day, the International Women's Day. I am a father of four girls. There is no great joy, greater joy than really being in Christ Jesus and surrounded by this very loving, loving mother. We praise God for the women and we continue to pray that indeed the Lord will continue to work his purposes in the lives of our daughters, our sisters, our leaders, our mothers. Today, our provost is in Busoga speaking to a number of women at, um, at the cathedral. And this evening, we at All Saints Cathedral are also gathering with uh, uh, in our midweek service, but giving a, sp a special focus to the women, and we look forward to continuing to praying together. And of course, on uh, this Women's Day, allow me call upon the men that on uh, Saturday, sorry, on Friday, Friday this week, all the men are physically present in the overnight at All Saints Cathedral, and the women will request you to be online. Praise the Lord. We are sharing on uh, the subject, the key of unity in a revival, the key of unity in a revival. And we are taking a reading from Jude, uh, the epistle of Jude, the piece of Jude, which is the epistle just before the book of Revelation. And it is a one chapter book. Uh, I pray that as uh, we share from this epistle, the Lord will surely bless us. Let's pray. Lord, thank you indeed for the opportunity you give us to share in your word, uh, to build ourselves in you by your word, on your word. And Lord, it is our prayer that as we share this morning, Lord, that you will speak to each one of us. May you, Lord, speak through me to your people. May you bring this message to complete clarity. And Lord, may this message bring a complete transformation, everlasting change in all our lives. Lord, we pray for clarity in sharing your word through Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Amen. Amen. So allow me read for us Jude. Uh, Jude, just before the book of Revelation, I'll read verse 1 to verse 4, and then verse 17 to 23. The key text is verse 17 to 23, but to give it a good background, allow me to read verse 1 to verse 4, and then go to verse 17. Jude, only one chapter, so Jude from verse 1. Jude a servant of Jesus Christ and a brother of James. To those who have been called, who are loved in God, the Father and kept for Jesus Christ, mercy, peace, and love be yours in abundancy. Dear friends, although I was very eager to write to you about the salvation we share, I felt compelled to write and urge you to contend for the faith that was once for all entrusted to God's holy people. For certain individuals whose condemnation was written about long ago have secretly slipped in among you. They are ungodly people who pervert the grace of our God into a license for immorality and deny Jesus Christ, our only sovereign and Lord. Verse 17, Jude chapter 1, verse 17. But, dear friends, remember what the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ foretold. They said to you, 
In the last times, there will be scoffers who will follow their own ungodly desires. These are the people who divide you, who follow mere natural instincts and do not have the spirit. But you, dear friends, by building yourselves up in your most holy faith and praying in the Holy Spirit, keep yourselves in God's love as you wait for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ to bring you to eternal life. Be merciful to those who doubt. Save others by snatching them from the fire. To others show mercy mixed with fear. Hating even the clothing stained by corrupted flesh. The word of the Lord. The key of unity in a revival. This Lent, this month, we have focused on teaching regarding revival. Let me take us to first make a reflection on what revival is. Revival is making alive again those that have been alive but have fallen into coldness or into a dead state. Believers who need to be brought back to their first love are those that are to be revived. So revival is bringing believers back to their first love. We read this in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 4. Consider how you have fallen and return to the love you had at first. First love. Revival. Something has gone cold and it needs to be brought back to life. Revival is a spiritual awakening from a state of dormancy or stagnation in the life of a believer, a spiritual reawakening. Friends, we have not needed this in our lives, in our generation, as we need it today in this season when the church is still suffering the effects of the COVID-19 pandemic. We need this revival and we praise God that this Lent reflection is coming as, as we heal from the effects of the lockdown, some permanent effects. People that have gone from us, families that have been left orphaned as a result of the pandemic, projects that completely collapsed as a result of the pandemic. Church uh, styles that probably will take long to get back even the good styles as a result of the lockdown. We need a spiritual awakening, actually the entire world, from a state of dormancy and stagnation in the life of we believers. When revival doesn't happen after this dormancy and after a kind of a coldness, then the evil one takes over. And as you can see, friends, again, evil has not flourished as we are seeing in a time when we hear that our mother church, the Church of England, in their general sitting, sat and said, We are going to bless same-sex marriages just after the lockdown when spiritual people went cold it is that some people have continued to go cold so for we that are here it is a prayer it is our mandate our call to awaken each other as we cry out to the lord for a revival revival friends has got to do with renewal of love for God, renewed love for God. It is appreciation of God's holiness. It's building a passion for God's word and his church. Revival has got to do with a convicting awareness of personal and corporate sin. Conviction by the power of the Holy Spirit that we have gone wrong and the Holy Spirit cutting us to the heart. We are told in uh, Acts chapter 2, after the apostle 
Peter preached on the day of Pentecost, people were cut to the heart. And that's why, again, we've been teaching from Acts. And this Sunday, we had this uh, well expounded to us. And throughout this week, a call to repentance that comes as a result of the convicting power of the Holy Spirit. People getting to acknowledge their sin as individuals, as a corporate body, and this leading to repentance and also restitution. Friends, restitution, repentance has got to do with, I realized I did wrong, I sinned, and I turned back to the Lord. Restitution says, if you stole, take back. I can imagine, dear friends, after this lockdown, people that stole what didn't belong to them, people that got engaged in corruption and used the resources that belonged to COVID patients and COVID wards, and people that are now beginning to change vehicles that were meant for government and the Ministry of Health to serve people during the lockdown, people who are beginning to turn those as their personal property. Imagine a revival breaking out and all these double cabins are brought back to State House. They are all packed all over Kampala. Oh, praise God, some of them being brought to church that God's work will carry on. Restitution, when people begin to return what they have stolen. On Wednesday, uh, it was Ash Wednesday, the Reverend Captain Florence did share her own testimony, how the Lord convicted her to return to the supermarket what she had stolen when she worked in a supermarket. Friends, revival gets us to that point where we take back what you've stolen. Zacchaeus, when he encountered the Lord Jesus Christ, he said, hey, whatever I have stolen, I am going to ask these people to write down and I shall return back. That is what you call revival. Revival has got to do with the spirit of humility, people humbling themselves before each other, before the Lord and only Christ Jesus being exalted. And as already mentioned, a desire for repentance and growth in righteousness. This is what it is for us when we talk about revival. In a revival, believers are invigorated. They are given a new energy. They are deepened in faith. And their eyes are opened to the truth of God's love in a new and fresh way. So revival says a fresh start with a clean slate, a fresh start with a clean state, a new beginning of a life lived in obedience to God. Praise the Lord. The world needs a fresh start. We each need a fresh start, especially as we recover from the pandemic, that we shall not go back, we shall not be the same again. In a revival, the charm, the deception, the power of the world is broken. Hallelujah. Revival, spiritual revival, turns people away from the deception, the charm, the deceiving spirits of the world. The power of the world is broken and a new power is generated. The power to live in God, that even when people live in the world, they'll know they are not of the world. In a revival, believers, we stop being controlled and living standards of the world and we leave the standards of the Lord. Revival therefore leads to changed lives. Revival leads to movements that are advocating and promoting righteousness. Revival leads to massive evangelism and social justice. We see fellowships being born and people begin to desire to spend time together in fellowship as they pray, as they read God's word. And we see the use of people's spiritual gifts at work. We see open confession of sin and repentance. Sin is not, is not hidden, not concealed in a revival, but rather repentant. When we talk about the key of unity in a revival, friends, in a revival, it is a great 
reawakening. And it is our prayer. Friends, on this Women's Day, let's pray for a reawakening of God's people. The people of God turning back to him. The people of God revering God and no longer being controlled by the powers of the world. But we, living in the world, not influenced by the world, but we influencing the world. And how we pray that this is what we shall see here at All Saints Cathedral, that he is what we shall see in the city of Kampala, is that this is what we shall see in our homes, in our marriages. May the Lord bring revival in our relationships, in all aspects of our lives. So when you talk about the key of unity in our revival, as we see in Jude, we are saying this year, again, our theme, United for Service and Growth, as drawn from Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11 to 16. Verse 13, particularly in Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 13, talks about Christian unity, Christian unity. And uh, allow me read this for us. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 13 that these gifts have been given, given as such from verse 2, verse 12, to equip God's people for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ Jesus. So when we talk of unity, we are talking about attaining um, a whole measure of the fullness of Christ Jesus. Believers that are moving in unity have the fullness of Christ Jesus. And this we may not reach in one day. This we may not reach until actually we meet with the Lord Jesus. It therefore calls us to strive for unity that we attain this full measure of Christ Jesus. Unity, we talk about we being united with God in Christ Jesus. So Christ is at the center of our unity as believers. Unity for our shadows, the worship that is in heaven, when we read Ephesians, or the, the book of Revelation, chapter 7, verse 9 to 10. Revelation chapter 7, verse 9 to 10. When we talk about the unity of believers, we are talking about the shadowing or foreshadowing of what is in heaven. In other words, it is bringing heaven here on earth. So Revelation chapter 7, verse 9. Revelation chapter 7, verse 9. I'll read this. After this, I looked, and there before me was a great multitude that no one could count, from every nation, tribe, people, and language. Standing before the throne and before the Lamb, they were wearing white robes and were holding palm branches in their hands. And they cried out in a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God, who sits on the throne, and to the Lamb. Salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. These were people from every nation, from every tribe, from every language. They were standing before one throne and before the Lamb, the throne of God, and for the Lamb, the Lord Jesus Christ. A people of every nation. We talk about unity, we're talking about people that are different. And we are saying this is a foreshadowing of what we see in heaven as Revelation chapter 7 brings our way. My question I have here is, how is it that people from every nation, every tribe, language, were all singing one song, salvation belongs to our God? I want to believe these people of different tribes also had different languages, as the scripture is telling us here. They had different styles, and so we are talking about unity 
in diversity. Unity in diversity that even when we are different in many ways, in gender, male and female, different in tribe, different in age, in church, youth, children, adults, father's union and mother's union, different in terms of our perception, in terms of our education, these people were singing one song in one loud voice, salvation belongs to our God. I just imagined a setting where you have the Bagana and the Bachiga, and they're all singing this song, and they're all saying, salvation belongs to our God. So the Baganda are saying, Oblokozi, Uveri and at the same time, the Bachiga are shouting, Okujunwa, Nikurugo, Aruhanga, and the Basaga are saying the same thing. But the person writing, writes one statement, salvation belongs to our God. Friends, isn't this what scripture is calling us to live in our time today? That as a people that are experiencing a revival, we can be different. We may be diverse in terms of cultures, in terms of experiences and education setting, but you know what? We are called to mirror heaven here on earth. And it is for people that have attained a fullness in Christ Jesus, a people that are mature in Christ Jesus, that demonstrate unity. Therefore, unity is a symbol of our maturity in Christ Jesus. A believer that promotes unity and diversity is one that is mature in Christ Jesus. And that's why we read in Ephesians again, chapter four, verse three, make every effort to keep the unity of the spirit through the bond of peace. Make every effort to keep the unity of the spirit through the bond of peace. Making every effort means that we must work at it. We must strive. It is hard work. Friends, in a diverse circumstance, it is not easy to keep unity. But in Christ Jesus, we strive, we work hard in him that we maintain unity. Unity as a key for a revival is that unity holds diversities together. And when diversity is in terms of our spiritual gifting, diversity is in terms of our cultural experiences, diversity is in terms of our age, diversity is in terms of our life experiences. You can imagine running a group where people say, for us, we want to sing a hymn. Others no, want to do a contemporary something. No, for us, actually, we want to have a kind of a silent moment. It is this striving in unity, which is a result of our growing in Christ Jesus. In other words, when you have grown in Christ Jesus, you let go of what is for your convenience and allow what is for the kingdom of God to take over. And that's what we started with, that in a revival, it ceases to be about us, but about the Lord Jesus. And in the Lord Jesus, we see unity demonstrated among brethren. That's why one of his last statements in the upper room in John chapter 17, in the upper room, as he concludes his time with the disciples, he speaks to them and calls them to live unto unity. Be one as Christ, I and the Lord have been one. And he prays in that prayer for the believers that we shall be united as the Lord is united with the Father. Allow me bring out three things from the book of Jude to help us reflect on the critical importance of unity in a revival. Three things from the book of Jude, from the epistle of Jude. One, Jude is calling us believers to be united against evil that we must be united against evil and evildoers and the propagators of evil. One voice against evil. Number two, that we should be united towards God's love. United towards God's love. And number three, in a revival, that we should be, should be united in evangelism, in social action, in stepping out there. As believers, we should be one united 
against evil. We read again in Jude, the text that I read, Jude chapter 1, verse 4, united against evil. This is what verse 4 says. Certain individuals whose condemnation was written about long ago have secretly slipped in among you. They are ungodly people who pervert the grace of God into a license for immorality. And they denied Jesus Christ, our only sovereign and Lord. And verse 8 in the book of Jude again, verse 8, in the very same way, on the strength of their dreams, these ungodly people pollute their own bodies, reject authority, and heap abuse on celestial beings. Talking about the people that are promoting evil. And continuing in verse 12 to verse 13, these people are blemishes at your love feasts eating with you without the slightest qualm. Shepherds who feed only themselves, they are clouds without rain, blown along by the wind, autumn trees without fruit and uprooted. Twice dead, they are wild waves of the sea, forming up their shame, wandering stars for whom blackest darkness has been reserved forever. Verse 16 says, these people, are grumblers and fault finders. They follow their own evil desires. They boast about themselves and flatter others for their own advantage. Together, we must be united against such people. What these people are promoting were aspects of occultism. They were promoting aspects of false teaching. They were turning away from the grace of God. Verse 4 says, they pervert the grace of our God into a license for immorality. They deny Jesus Christ, our only sovereign and Lord. And in a revival, like us all, our call is that we are united against evil. We are united against we are united against evil. There is no way we can, as believers, identify with those that are perverting the grace of God. Unfortunately, as we talk about revival, it is possible that in our own homes we can have members that are part of occultic churches, false teaching churches. Friends, I speak this with, uh, with pain because in my own extended family, we once had a member that got lost into the worship at Kakande's church. It was very difficult to get this member out of Kakande. In fact, she ended up in debts because um, she was... Uh, deceived in order to get a blessing, bring in this amount of money. And you know, dear friends, she ended up borrowing money which she didn't pay back, who ended up getting to police. And the Reverend Paulson had to pay money in order for her to be brought back. Praise God for the ministry of healing and deliverance that was happening at St. Stephen's Chitara. Prayer meetings happening at St. Stephen's Chitara. So we now requested her to have a time at St. Stephen's Chitara. And for two years at St. Stephen's Chitara, my dear wonderful sister, praying, attending meetings, gaining a new discipleship was restored, delivered from the spirit of Kakande. And today she is set free. Praise the Lord. It is possible, friends, as you talk about revival, that some of us could be engaged in aspects of occultism and tell you what, there is no way we are going to grow. We must be united together against evil. Praise the Lord. Number two, number two, we must be united towards God's love. United towards God's love. Verse 17 says, Jude verse 17, Jude chapter 1, verse 17. But dear friends, remember what the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ foretold. They said to you, in the last times, there will be scoffers who will follow their own ungodly desires. These are the people who divide you, who follow mere natural instincts, who do not have the spirit. And these are the people that you've read above. But you, dear friends, 
by building yourselves up in your most holy faith and praying in the Holy Spirit. Keep yourselves in God's love as you wait for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ to bring you to eternal life. Hallelujah. United towards God's love. And how do we show our unity towards God's love? That we are a people that are built up in prayer and praying in the, that we are a people that are yielding to the Holy Spirit. Verse 20 says, dear friends, by building up yourselves in the most holy faith and praying in the Holy Spirit, keep yourselves in God's love as you wait for the mercy of the Lord Jesus Christ to bring you to eternal life. You see, when you pray in the Holy Spirit, when you pray in the Holy Spirit, you pray yielding the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Patience, gentleness, self-control, endurance, perseverance. These are parts of this the revival we are talking about. Sometimes we pray and answers do not come immediately. We must build ourselves up in the spirit. Praise the Lord. And lastly, we are called to be united towards God's. We are united in evangelism and social action. As you read verse 22 and verse 23. In our revival, we are united towards love, rather towards evangelism and action. Verse 20 says, be merciful to those who doubt, save others by snatching them from the fire. See that evangelism says, we must snatch them from the fire. We must recognize that there are people who do not know the Lord Jesus and we must snatch them from the fire. To others show mercy, verse 23 says, mixed with fear, hating even the clothing stained by corrupted flesh. In evangelism, because we hate sin, we are pursuing holiness. Because we know that without holiness, we cannot see God. In Hebrews chapter 12, verse 14, without holiness, we can't see God. And so we want to snatch people that are moving in evil, out of that evil, into lives that are holy. We are also being merciful. That is the social action we are talking about, being merciful being forgiving, showing compassion. This is telling us that we are called to hate sin and love the sinner. Hate sin and love the sinner. There is a, a, a debate that is happening, especially among those people that are going for GAFCON in Chigali. There was a proposal from one of the leaders that uh, we must hate sin, but love the sinner. <laughs> hate homosexuality, but love the people that have been affected by homosexuality. And one Muchiga said, no way, there's no way I am going to love a homosexual person. No, 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 no. I cannot distinguish the evil from the person. The two are together. <laughs> and you know what, dear friends, Jude is telling us here, the people that have perverted the grace of God, the people that have fallen from the grace of God, one that we shouldn't identify with them. That's why point number one here is be united against such people, be united against false teaching, against evil. Number two, be united towards God's love, his love that is unconditional. And number three, united in evangelism is that we take God's love to the people that seem unlovable. However, we do not compromise. And so, hate the sin, love the sinner. That is how people are going to be reinstated in fellowship. That is how the revival power and energy is going to bear fruit. A people that had fallen away being brought back to fellowship. A testimony from a member in the fellowship saying, I was fallen, I had sinned, but the church welcomed me back and I have repented. I am not returning back. Friends, being united in a revival calls us to step out of our comfort again, to wear maturity in Christ Jesus, and together, evil is evil, sin is sin, 
we are united against sin. The challenge the church has today, we have some churches in Kampala that are preaching and are acknowledging sin. And for us, we are saying, no, sin is sin. We cannot hold onto it. We are united against sin, against evil. We are also united in God's love and in the mission of God as his love is shown to his people. May the Lord bless us, dear friends, as we continue to pray that revival spreads through us, that as we emerge, the church emerges out of the effects of the lockdown, we are the ambassadors of God's revival power to his people in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Back to you, Sister Joan. Let's pray. Lord, thank you so much that in the midst of um, the fallen world we are in, especially we healing from the effects of the pandemic, COVID-2019, that you call us to be a people that are revived and that your spirit is reviving us. It is my prayer that, Lord, this will be real for us as believers in the body of Christ, church worldwide, that we at All Saints Cathedral use us as ambassadors of revival, especially moving in unity, despite we being a people from every nation, every tribe, every tongue, diverse in culture, diverse in our different professions, diverse in our life experiences, in, in our gender, in our age, that Lord, in unity, we shall be one against evil, one in your love and one in taking your love to your people in Christ Jesus our Lord we pray. Amen. 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 Uh, praise the Lord brethren and uh, thank you so much Reverend Paulson for accepting to be used of the Lord. We thank, we thank you for this message that you've brought to us with clarity and uh, I, how I pray that we we, we go and live in unity. Uh, brethren, let's receive the word of God as we pray for Reverend Paulson. Blessed Savior, in the name of Jesus, we continue to thank you for this time that we have been in your presence. We thank you for your servant, Reverend Paulson, that you've used uh, to minister to us, to bring forth your word with clarity, we thank you for your spirit that is working in him. My King of glory, in the name of Jesus, I pray that you continue to increase him. You continue to give him fresh revelation uh, of your word, of your grace, and of your power. My master, in the name of Jesus, I pray for a covering upon his life, upon his ministry, upon his family. Because of this word that he has brought to us, oh God, I pray that there will be no retaliation from the enemy in the name of Jesus. But rather we pray that there will be blessings, your blessing that uh, makes rich and adds no sorrow. My God and my King, I pray that may he continue to experience grace, the grace that will take him higher on a daily basis as he seeks, oh God, to preach your word, to, to, to extend your kingdom, my King of glory. I pray for favor. I pray for I pray for open doors to, to share your word. In Jesus' name, I have prayed and believed. Amen. Mm. Amen. Uh, brethren, uh, Reverend Paulson has uh, brought so many things to, to our attention. He has shared about what revival is about, which is a uh, uh, reawakening from dormancy or stagnation, being made alive again. And uh, in this being made alive again, there is, uh, there, is, there is need for us to, to overcome evil. There is need to cry out to God for revival so that we, we at personal level and uh, corporate level, we shall be aware of sin and repent of it in its totality that we shall not uh, do half repentance. Uh, we are going to pray that we that we shall um, ask God 
that he his spirit works in our midst that as christians we shall repent sin as sin that we shall cease from this business of baptizing sin and make it appealing or oh, making making it simpler but sin will be sin uh, we shall also pray that uh, the lord gives us the ability to 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 stay united amidst our our differences the differences that God made, uh, like uh, it's not a creation, but it is God's working. Like it is not a problem that I'm a Muchiga and uh, someone else is a Muganda. That is God's working. He's just did it for his glory and for, for, the, for beauty. So let us pray that we shall remain united and also that uh, we shall have that maturity of accepting people if someone is gifted in a in a certain area and you are not you also have your talent you also have your gift let it not be an area of contention that will bring uh division in the church the, then we need to unite so that we fight evil as as a team if evil is evil let us agree and fight together let us uh, ask the lord that we we will, we will have uh, open eyes to see spiritually, not to just look at things in a, in a carnal way. And, and that the Lord will bring about co conviction that people will, that we will end up repenting. Then we also need to pray about God's love to be, to be experienced in our lives. It is until we have uh, experienced this love that we shall extend it to the to, to to other people. Then finally, that we shall go out to preach the word because we are united. We shall pull resources. We shall use the different the different uh, gifts that the Lord has has given us so that the kingdom of God is extended. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we continue to worship you, to give you praise, and to to honor you because you alone are the Lord. Besides thee, there is no other God. We thank you, King of glory, for it is your business that we are rescued from the hand of the evil one. My God and my King, I thank you for you are still in the business of reviving us, of reawakening us, oh God, to come to you. You still have your hands open, oh God, and you tell us to come. And Lord, when you come, when we come, you shall receive us. My master, I thank you for your word has been preached. We no longer have any reason of saying that we did not know. My master, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for your Holy Spirit that you have outpoured on your people these days in these seasons of oh God. My King of glory, in the name of Jesus, I pray that as Christians, as your followers, oh God, we shall reawaken from sleep, oh God, that we shall not be stagnant, my King of glory, but we shall arise for your, for your light has shone upon our lives, my King of glory. My master, I pray that you, in this revival time, as we, as we continue to trust you, I pray that your spirit that convicts men of sin will, will move in our lives, oh God. And when we are convicted, Lord, I pray that we shall not harden our hearts, oh God, but rather we shall yield to your calling because it is clear that those who will respond to your call will be be saved. But then those that will not repent, oh God, there is, there is judgment for them. My master, in the name of Jesus, I pray that we shall yield to your calling, that we shall obey you, my master. And once we have obeyed, may we come totally in, may we come in total surrender, my king of glory. I pray that we shall which there will be confession of sin and that there will be turning around that people's lives will be transformed. Thieves will still know more. Uh, people that are in adulterous relationships, oh God, they will change. People that are that are in idolatry, my master, they will change and worship the true God. And because they will worship you, my King of glory, we shall experience we shall experience growth. There will be peace. My master, in the name of Jesus, we read in your word, as long as the Israelites obeyed you, whenever they did your will, whenever they worshipped, they, they recognized and made a turn around and worshipped and worshipped you and pulled down the, the, the 
the, the, the idols my master. There was peace, there was flourishing, there was increase. My King of glory, I pray that we shall, oh God, we shall, oh God, experience this revival. That Jesus people will no more hide behind the, uh, behind the sin. That we shall no more, uh, oh God, try to, to change names of the things that are bad. That we shall look at them. Lord, I pray that you'll give us open eyes, spiritual eyes of God mm -hmm. to be able to, you know, to, to see, see and you know, recognize that this is sin. My King of Glory, in the name of Jesus, I pray that as we come back to revival, as we get revived, may you work in us, my Master, that we shall be united, that we shall have this uh, that we shall have this ability to grow and recognize that you are the God of all flesh, you are the one who blesses people with various gifts, that my God, they will that that that, that we shall be able to accommodate as long as the the, the, the differences are not based on sin. If the differences are brought about by the things that you created, my master, I pray that we shall be able to grow, that we shall be able to accommodate each other, that we shall not be divided on 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 on, on social differences, social statuses, the tribe, my master, the regions which we come from, but rather that we shall we shall remain united in you that we shall walk together as soldiers of the cross and because we are walking together we shall experience love your love will be seen in our midst my king of glory I, we cannot unite with the people that we do not love my master how i pray that your love your love that is unconditional your love that that does not look at where someone is coming from how much they are and what, what gender they are my king of God, we will bind us together with cords of love that cannot be broken. And because we are we are joined together, we shall be having the, the ability, we shall be stronger to fight against all evil. My master, I pray that you shall give us the grace that even for those people that have, have, gone, have gone wayward, that those that are still struggling, my master, in love, we shall rebuke them, we shall pray for them, we shall bring them back into your flock, and we together, we shall be able to defeat that the enemy, we shall be able to defeat evil. My King of glory, in the name of Jesus, after we have repented, after we have all in unity hated, hated evil, we shall have that, that, your love that will propel us to go out, my master, and make disciples for you. My King of glory, that we shall make disciples, that we shall go out in love and touch lives, that we shall go out in love, preaching, praying, and setting your people free from the bondage of sin. Oh Lord, delivering them from the operation of demonic attacks. My master, that, the, that because we are united and because we are focusing on you, you are our strength, you are our everything, that the sick will be set free. That Lord, the that there will be signs and wonders in our midst, and everyone will know that there is a God that fights for these people. My master, in the name of Jesus, I pray that we shall be united together as Christians, and we shall walk together to, to uh, as we as we go to heaven, as we wait for your eternal deliverance, when we shall sing together, as Reverend Paulson was telling us, when we shall sing and declare after we have overcome the world, the devil and the flesh, that salvation belongs to the Lord. My master, I pray how that that will be our portion. My King of glory, in the name of Jesus, I pray that even as we go uh, uh, out and to... to uh, to celebrate Women's Day, my master, may we above all, Lord, celebrate you because you are the one that, that even created these women. Lord, I pray that this day you will use us, that we shall work towards unity in the name of Jesus. We thank you, we bless your name. We, we glorify you, we give you praise because you are the one who can unite us, both Jews and Gentiles, and we march together to heaven. We thank you, we glorify you. In Jesus' most precious name, I have prayed and believed. Amen. Amen. Amen.